My dear friends and colleagues, today I'd like to present a very interesting case where the anterior chamber kept collapsing while I was performing phaco emulsification. And I wonder if you can solve the mystery before we actually reveal the cause. This was a mature cataract with a chalky nucleus sclerosis. The beginning of the case was pretty uneventful. It started with staining the anterior capsule with tripen blue dye and a carefully constructed clear corneal incision. The capsular rexus was then performed with a 26 gauge cystitome. And even though I encountered liquefied cortex, I found I could still perform the capsular rexus with a gentle posterior pressure and traction. However, with the completion of the capsular rexus, I found that it was a little too small, just about 4 to 4.5 millimeters when compared to the hardness of the nucleus sclerosis and hence I decided to slightly extend it. Therefore, I make a nick at 5 o'clock position and using a utrata forceps, I enlarge the capsular rexus to about 5 millimeters. Now this size of capsular rexus is of course sufficient to perform the phaco emulsification. So let's see how the phaco emulsification procedure went. I'm employing the direct phaco chop technique in this case. So because the phaco tip was a little frayed, I requested for a new tip which I was provided with. You can see that it's a brand new tip. And I go ahead with phaco emulsification. And even at the very start, when I went into foot pedal 2, notice that there was a fluctuation of the anterior chamber and a shallowing of the anterior chamber. I impale the nucleus with the bevel down position to get a good hold making a small relaxing cut at the conjunctiva because I noticed conjunctival ballooning. And the chamber completely collapsed on me when I went to foot pedal 2. So the first thing I did is I checked whether the bottle height was correct, whether the irrigation flow was okay. And after ascertaining this, I went, once again went ahead to perform phaco emulsification. But the minute I started the procedure, the chamber kept collapsing. The incision was fine, it was neither too tight nor too patulous. The side port incisions were also okay. But because the chamber was unstable, I was under constant pressure while performing phaco emulsification. You see how the chamber is collapsing on me each and every time. At this point, I stopped and I decided to take a stock of the situation, changed the irrigation line, the cassette and the tubing completely, changed the BSS bottle and the IV set. I also primed and tuned the machine fresh. After Performing all this, I thought I could go ahead with phaco emulsification and now the chamber would be stable because I seem to have covered almost all possible aspects of why a surge could occur. So I went in more confidently this time to perform the phaco emulsification and I'm hoping against hope that the chamber will be stable now, but unfortunately as soon as I started with the fake wave emulsification, I noticed that the chamber stability was not greatly improved even with all these interventions that I had performed. And the chamber was tending to collapse. You can see how the pupil is narrowing down and how the chamber is fluctuating. 
and it is of course very dangerous to continue fake wave emulsification in such a scenario. So I was at, totally at my wit's end as to what could be the possible cause why this is happening. And as a last ditch maneuver, I decided to change the FACO tip because that's the only thing I had not changed as well as the sleeve. So I got back the tip that was originally given to me, which was although a little frayed, I thought, let me try. If this effort also fails and if the chamber collapses at this point, I would have to convert it into an SICS and then find out later on why the chamber stability was not good. But with the change of the FACO tip, there was a dramatic improvement in the situation. The anterior chamber stability was normal and it was quite easy for me to effortlessly remove the remaining pieces of the fragment. You can see how rock solid the anterior chamber is. Now dear friends, have you really figured out what could have been the cause for this abnormal shallowing of the anterior chamber? Well, let me give you the answer. Now this is a standard 20 gauge tip with the outer diameter 1.1 millimeter and an internal diameter of 0.9 millimeter with the associated sleeve. Now what we use is a 21 gauge microflow tip outer diameter 0.9, inner diameter 0.7, which further tapers to 0.5 millimeters. Now, when I asked for a new tip, I was given a standard tip. Now, remember that the flow of fluid through a tip is governed by Poiseuille's law and the flow is proportional to the fourth power of its radius. So, just by narrowing the tip from 1.1 to 0.9 millimeters, you reduce the flow by more than 50 percent. So, instead of giving me the microflow tip that we normally use, I was provided with a 20 gauge standard tip with the microflow sleeve. This had the dual effect of reducing infusion flow and while also at the same time increasing the outflow through the tip. And this was the main cause for the collapse in the anterior chamber. So let's look at this again. I am now using a standard tip, a 20 gauge standard tip with a sleeve that is meant for a microflow tip which is the reason why the chamber was collapsing. So once I changed the tip to a microflow tip and I used the appropriate sleeve then everything started happening fine once again. So the lesson here is that the devil is in the details and we should use the appropriate tip with the appropriate sleeve. Well, the rest of the procedure went on without a hitch. The intraocular lens was implanted uneventfully. And I finally emerged from this surgical experience with the knowledge that how much ever experience and how many ever cases you might have done, fecal emulsification can sometimes throw a curveball at you.